All right, so we got five rapid yep. fire questions for you. First one, do you putt with the line of the ball or do you just kind of blank spot of the ball and, and visualize it? Line. Try them both, and I just have more success and better feel visually when I have a line. Cool. Cool. Um, favorite TV or movie character? In golf or just in general? In just general. like a, a TV or movie character that you most relate to, I yeah, guess. That's, that's the, yeah. Uh, God, Josh Lyman, West Wing, done. Oh, he's the ooh. deputy chief of staff, and I always <laughs> in, West in, Wing for the boys. In life, in life, I really, <clears throat> I've kind of understood about myself that I don't, I, I, I like the spotlight. I hate the shine. I don't mind being in front of people and talking, but I don't want it to be about myself. Uh, and when it comes to being on a team, I want to be the person coach goes to, you know, in those last minutes. But I don't want to coach the team. God, that's a good answer. Dude, West Wing's such an underrated show. Youngins don't even know. Aaron Sorkin's my Aaron Sorkin's oh, my muse. Hell yeah. <laughs> so do you prefer using a blade putter or a mallet putter? <sighs> Striking a chord. I prefer a blade. I have a Scotty Cameron Newport. I've got a Wilson 8802 blade that I got for a 17th birthday present. Both of them I still use actively. But I am going out on a limb this year, inspired by Scotty Scheffler's recent success, and I am going to use my mother's Ping Scottsdale TR Ooh. mallet because I got to lie. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of like driving a minivan for the first time. You're like, damn, this thing is spacious and comfortable. Like, <laughs> Same thing with the mallets. So I prefer a blade, but I'm going to be dating a mallet this summer. Okay. <laughs> cool. Um, what is your go-to golf ball? Like what's the one that you, without a doubt, you have to go to every time? T uh, Taylor made TPX. Mm. I feel like we've gotten that answer yeah that times. was uh, it's like rick. A, it's a yeah rick definitely well, rick loves that it's yeah. been it used to be it used to be i was a titleist tour for a long time uh and i still do enjoy you know going down that road pro v1s are kind of the most used ball probably for a reason but i have a lot of psychological attachment to some good rounds that i've played mm. using a, a tailor made so now i've just accepted that that's probably why not roll with it we're gonna yeah. see if that works with the mallet <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, so the last other rapid fire, if you weren't golfing, what is it that you'd be out just kind of doing with your free time or with life? Camping outdoors. I'd be somewhere, you know, at a campsite, building a fire or cooking over a fire or going out for a hike or floating down a river. Um, you know, oh. it's really, that's, that's kind of that my biggest thing whenever we go on vacations is, you know, where can we get a mixture of outdoors and golf and, uh, that's just it. That's the, the the hardest thing for me in the summertime is we do go camping quite a bit and reminding myself that these are the money makers and I can't be playing with fire too much anymore right. like I was yeah. when I was a young buck. Yeah. Jason Pierre Paul action. Yeah. <laughs> Stand up. Like, yeah. up. <laughs> too, too soon. Yeah. Two, it was like 10 years. <laughs> it's <just> like 10 <laughs> years. <laughs> Wait, are you uh so you're in Mount, are you um a Patriots fan then? These are the, this is you're going to regret ever talking to me because all my answers are going to start like this. All right. My parents were from Michigan, born and raised uh, on the playground is where they spent most of their days. They both went to Eastern <laughs> Michigan and Michigan. We were a University of Michigan family. My grandfather went to the University of Michigan. I've got his Michigan flag out in the, in the, the garage that was his when he was a student. And so when I was in high school, Michigan football was my life. Like, you know, I lived and died. The 97 season was wonderful. Uh, I knew about Tom Brady before anybody in the Northeast because I remember when you know him and Drew Henson were going back to back. Drew Henson would start the game. Tom Brady would come in and clean it up and win the game. So when he got hit, when he got drafted and he got his shot with the Patriots, um, I was I was still in college, but I was like super stoked. I was at UGA, but at the same time, I was super excited because my you know my childhood team and let's go Tom A. And then all of a sudden when. <laughs> You jump on that bandwagon right then, and then he just has all the success. So it's been a 20-year you know, journey, and along the way, of course, now I'm what I call born-again New England. I married a girl from Maine. I live outside of Boston. Uh, you know, Around that same time, I started following the, the Red Sox more than the Braves, and so I've made the official switch. And so I am, I am a Patriots fan. I'm much more of a college football passionate you know, fanatic. Uh, but sure enough, when you live in a big city like Boston or you live around this kind of area – uh, it's just more fun too when the teams 
are playing well. Like I'm not, right. I'm not a big basketball fan, but I'm, I'm super looking forward to the playoffs because the TD garden's a lot of fun. The Celtics, when they're playing well, the whole city's buzzing. So mm-hmm. there's your, uh, there's your $3 answer to the quarter question. No, but I can, yeah. but I can respect the, the Brady lore from, you know, growing up with the Michigan. Like that yeah. makes sense. That's, and that's yeah. fine. You know, we're, we're by default, like, uh, he's ba- he's basically Philly's everything. Like, yeah, which Philly started because of Mc- McNabb went to Syracuse, and I watched him growing up, yeah. and then followed him to the Eagles, yeah. and then it it's easy to go to a Sixers or a Phillies game the night before an Eagles game, and it just kind of spanned out from there. But, and I'm a, yeah. I'm a diehard I got Yankees a picture fan. of myself. I'm oh, a diehard Yankees fan, diehard Knicks oh, fan. The only thing that doesn't fit is I'm a Cincinnati Bengals fan with football. It's been 20 years. Says my brother-in-law. Yeah, he's from yeah. Louisville, so that makes sense. Oh, okay. Like his family yeah. had season tickets forever. I hated football the, uh, growing up, so it was weird when I I was like, okay, I'm gonna pick a team and watch them play Green Bay one day, and I was like, oh, dude, this Chad Johnson guy's pretty pretty fucking great. <laughs> so oh, those just, uniforms are sick too. Dude, I, they I'm are. a big fan of the Bengals unis, especially when they bust out the snow the snow tiger, oh, the, yeah. the white God, uniforms. It's so hot. Uh, <laughs> the- <laughs> They're the Donovan so McNabb. I have a picture of myself. I told you my, my uncle coached at Syracuse in the late 80s. Yeah. Uh, he was a grad assistant or a student assistant uh, under Jim Beheim from, I want to say he said, 84 to 88. Mm. Uh, is what I t- texted him earlier. I was like, hey, I'm talking to some guys from Syracuse. I was like, I was like, when, when were you coaching them there? Uh, so shout out Uncle Barry. But um, I got a picture of myself at like 10 years old in the Carrier Dome on the 50-yard line, like, you know, standing there because <laughs> we got a good tour it back in the day, so – uh, and that's the other. That's the other thing. You look at the '04 Red Sox that uh, documentary, Four Days in October. Oh. My wife will not let me watch it. There's like certain months out of the year she thinks if I watch that, then I'm going to jinx the team that year. <laughs> <laughs> um, because she's like she was. Uh, she allows me to root for her teams that are New England teams because sure. she does take the stance of like, sure. you grew up elsewhere. You don't. You weren't here. You didn't go through it with us. Um, but uh, oh, love that. There we go. And uh, but she she allows me to root for these teams. But in the 04, you know, four days in October, Spike Lee, they're interviewing him right before game seven. And he says, this is why sports is greater than life, because you can't oh, script sports. Nobody knows what's about to fucking happen. You can't. Dude, you there's know? only like, and, what, and it's been such two a, major sports teams that have come back from a 3-0 deficit. Yeah. I I was in I was a senior in college when uh, when that World Series went down and that was when my kind of like light went on especially one of my fraternity brothers was a huge Cardinals fan and uh, uh, and he just hated that the Red Sox were getting all of this love because mm-hmm. I also was like ah you're scared to play them and I remember we almost fought one night <laughs> brothers punch each other sometimes. Thanks for watching today's episode. To see more of our content, be sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe on YouTube. We can be found at Basic Bogies on all platforms. Thanks. We hope to see you on the next one.